Hey guys, I hope everybody's having a fantastic day. Whether you're watching this in the morning, in the afternoon, or in the evening, I am glad you are here. First thing I want to do is just do a quick shout out and thank you to all the channel members. Thank you, thank you. And thank you to anyone who comes in to check out my knife, my EDC content. Thank you. I appreciate each and every one of you. If you haven't had a chance yet and you're so inclined, if you'd hit that subscribe button and that bell notification next to it, it would really help me out. So today I've got a very interesting spider co from the past, you would say. And this is the Velotin, and I think I'm pronouncing that right, subhilt. So the Velotin is a very unique, one-of-a-kind type of spider co. So it's got a spidey hole just like a spider co does. But you'll also notice that it has these two indentions here where the thumb studs, which no other spider co has, whoops, lock into that stop pin. So it basically is acting as a stop pin. The, the, uh, thumb studs are. A fellow by the name of Butch Velotin um, was a high-end custom maker, production maker, um, did automatics and did folders, and was a big fan of kind of overbuilt Italian made knives. And this knife was a collaboration between he and Spyderco, his design, and he again integrated his use of thumb studs as a stop pin. So you'll notice that is the only stop pin in the knife. You've got the, uh, the stop pin that keeps it from hitting that G10 on the bottom, and then you've got these two uh, thumb studs right here that catch right in that bolster, and bam, you've got a full-sized, wonderful feeling, beefy, as far as spider codes go, this is a beefy, beefy boy. Um, it's a liner lock, and it uses this Michael Walker liner lock, which I'm assuming Mike, Michael Walker is the inventor of the liner lock, but if you'll notice here, this steel frame is very thick. So that liner almost looks like a frame lock. See how it locks in there? Right at about 40%. This knife is made of a polished G10, and then you've got stainless steel, stainless steel bolster. You've got a four position clip. The Spyderco clip is with this one. This one is actually wearing a Lynch deep carry clip. You've got a blade that is just wicked awesome in my opinion. It's an S30 V blade. Um, so it's Spyderco's S30 V steel and it is deep, deep, deep hollow ground tanto. So what you'll notice is you've got this uh, kind of faceted flat ground tip. So you've got this hollow ground grind that goes to right here and then you've got the faceted flat ground tip which really gives you a beefy tip um, on that knife. And again, a full size hard working knife, no side to side, no up and down, and ironically, there's a Butch's Maker's Mark, the Velotin, and the Subhilt, I don't know where that comes from, but S30V, and then it's a Taichung Taiwan build, which there's nothing to get mad at about that for me. Taichung Taiwan um, has built some of my favorite spider codes from my Smock to my um, Sage 5, to my um, Watu, but this guy is sweet. Let's see if I can get some of this paper out. And we'll see how it cuts. I have not tried to cut with it yet. This is more of an overview than a review because this is not my knife. This knife belongs to my buddy who y'all are getting to know. A to Z EDC, he's my local buddy, goes to Blade Show with me. 
supplies me with some really cool knives to review. Um, he's also on Instagram. He's not on YouTube, but he's on Instagram, and he's got a cool selection. Go check him out over there. It's at A to Z EDC. I'd really appreciate it. But I have carried it. Lynch clip, as you might imagine, makes it go in and out of pocket very, very well. It is uh, therapeutically slicey would be an understatement. That tip is just sharp as you would ever want. The flat, full-size blade. Sorry guys, I'm in the cutting trance. But yeah, very, very deep hollow ground blade. Spyderco logo on that side, and then Butch's logo, the Valaton on that side. It looks like it uses a T8, kind of an interesting pivot in there. But again, you've got a full-size knife. We'll do some size comparisons here in just a second and get a measurement off of it, and then we'll weigh it because it is inspired by, and I think lives up to, that heavier Italian build. It almost looks like an old automatic. I think they might even make this knife in an automatic. I'm thinking it's on washers. And then the thumb studs are also your stop pin. Slow rolls fantastically. That's how I like to open it, it's so smooth. Let's do a couple of quick size comparisons. Let's look at it next to our Spyderco Paramilitary 2. It's going to be bigger than our pair 2. Let's look at it next to our 4 Max Elite, smaller than our 4 Max. Let's look at it next to the Shaman. Guys, it's going to be a little shorter than the PM2, or than the, it's going to be longer than the Shaman and longer than the PM2, which makes me think, I think the only larger knife I've got out right now is going to be my full-size Spartan Harsey, and it's going to come in about a half an inch longer than the Velotin Subhill. So let's do this in a really neat Tanto grind. So I don't know, it looks like a drop point. Spyderco calls it a Tanto. Um, and you can see where that grind merges right there. Just beautiful. Let's see how long this beast is. So it's going to come in at eight, three quarter, 8 and 3 quarter inches. Does have a lanyard hole. The blade is going to clock in at right under three and three quarter inches. The handle at five inches. The inside grip at four and a quarter. So four and a quarter from right here to right here. You can feel that liner, but it's not uncomfortable. You just know it's there. Again, smooth G10. I will get the calipers out. You do have some interior milling on the steel liners, which I guess you would almost have to because it'd be so heavy if you didn't. But let's take a look. at what we're working with here on our blade thickness. So our blade stock is 0.55, but it comes down after that hollow grind to a screaming 0.0175. And up at the tip where it's thicker. Point oh three nine five. And then the thickness of the knife is gonna be point six eight one oh. So over a half inch is thick, almost an inch tall. 
So you've got a nice contoured, smooth G10 handle that really just fits. I mean, it's a great grip, depending on whether you use a reverse grip, whether you use a traditional grip, whether you use more of a carving grip. Let's see what this guy is going to tip the scales at, because it is a heavier boy. Six point two ounces. So again, Butch and Spyderco want to design a kind of an overbuilt knife, and I think they accomplished that. Um, this is the Velotin or Valatin or Velotin, I think, like cotton subhilt, and subhilt's trademark. So I don't know what is the subhilt, but you do. You have these nice stainless um, liners and bolsters. You've got this really pronounced blade hole and this wicked, wicked looking blade that I just think is awesome. Belt satin finish, S30V, nice jimping right there on the, on the handle, and a liner lock, which you don't see every day in the Spyderco world. So for odd Spydercos or Spydercos that maybe I wasn't that up to par on, this guy was not on my bingo card. So it is an absolute... Cool knife, bigger than I would normally carry, but that's okay. I still appreciate it for what it is. But guys, I want to thank you for watching the video. I hope you found it informative, educational, somehow entertaining. I do ask if you would, feel free to like the video. Feel free to subscribe. Most importantly, look out for the guy or gal to your left. Look out for the guy or gal to your right. Look out for each other. Go forward with love in your heart and choose debate, not hate. I love you all. Peace.